Hey guys, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today's video has nothing to do with Ryzen. Hmm, that doesn't seem like it could be right. Uh, no, that's wrong. Today's video, we're actually looking at Ryzen memory performance again. Now you might be thinking, hang on a minute Steve, didn't you make me sit through a 13 minute video not two weeks ago that discussed Ryzen's memory performance? What more needs to be said? Well, firstly, thanks for bolstering the channel's watch time. YouTube might actually start serving me some good ads now, and I'll be able to eat three meals a day. So the reason we're doing this all over again is because the previous video looked at Ryzen's memory performance from a completely different angle. The idea behind that video was to investigate claims that Ryzen scales better with higher clocked memory than, say, KB Lake does. It was suggested that using DDR4-3600 memory would see Ryzen 7 overtake the Core i7-7700K in most games. Anyway, this turned out to be completely false, as it was discovered in every single game tested, except for Ashes of the Singularity Escalation, that the 7700K underclocked to 4GHz was still faster than the 1800X clocked at the same frequency. Now, the point isn't to make Ryzen 7 look bad. In fact, given the choice of the Core i7 7700K or the Ryzen 7 1700, I would go with Ryzen every time. Instead, the point of all this Ryzen testing from day one has been to try and learn what the strengths and weaknesses of this new processor architecture are, how it works and what the consumer can do to get the most out of their setup. Anyway, so we've established that it's perfectly fine to benchmark Ryzen at the same memory frequency of an Intel competitor, and this is because for the most part the margins are going to be much the same whether you test with DDR4-3200 or 2133 for example. In the previous video we saw pretty consistent scaling in almost all the games tested right up to DDR4-3200 using the GTX 1080 Ti. As a result, the takeaway for most seemed to be that they would need to invest in expensive, high frequency memory to get the most out of their Ryzen CPU. And well, given the results I showed, I can certainly see how you would come to that conclusion. The problem though being that most probably won't buy a GeForce GTX 1080 Ti graphics card. Statistically, something like the GTX 1060 or RX 480 is far more likely. This is a problem because with these graphics cards, gamers are heavily GPU bound in almost every game they play, providing they have a decent quad core CPU or better. So the advantage higher clocked memory hands the CPU isn't realised with a slower graphics card. For gamers what this means is purchasing the $175 US G skill memory that we use might not actually translate into any additional performance when compared to the $100 version rated at DDR4-2400. That money then would be far better invested in a faster GPU, or maybe a CPU, or perhaps even more memory capacity. Okay, so at this point I've waffled on quite a bit, you probably now realise that you might not need the fastest memory available, but you probably still don't know what kind of memory you actually need. To answer that we need to jump into the benchmarks, but before we do that, here are a few quick details. All testing was conducted using the Ryzen 7 1800X processor clocked at 4GHz, but the findings will be true for any Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 5 processor for that matter. In total I have tested 6 demanding titles with the GeForce GTX 1060, GTX 1070 and GTX 1080 Ti. The memory speeds we'll be comparing are DDR4 2133, 2666 and 3200. Okay, that's everything, let's check out what we found. Mass Effect Andromeda is primarily a GPU bound game, and we find this when testing with the GTX 1080 Ti. That said, the upgrade from DDR4 2133 to 2666 did boost the minimum, or the 0.1% result, by 6%, so that's a reasonable gain. However, when you retest with the GTX 1070, we see no such gains. Just one FPS separates the fastest configuration from the slowest, and that's margin of error stuff. The same is true when using the GTX 1060. Here we see the memory frequency has no noticeable impact on the performance at all. Hitman is a very CPU intensive game, and right now it throws up some interesting results, or rather slightly confusing results with Ryzen. For whatever reason, Ryzen heavily limits the performance of Nvidia's higher end GPUs in this title. It's either a display driver issue or a lack of optimization on the game's behalf, but whatever the case, the average frame rate is a bit misleading here. It's not often you'll see the GTX 1060 trailing the GTX 1080 Ti by a little over 10%. The 1080 Ti should be well over twice as fast when fully unleashed. Anyway, if we look at the minimum reported frame rate, we see that Ryzen does benefit from the higher clocked memory, even with the GTX 1070, though DDR4 2666 is coming close to extracting the maximum performance here. When it comes to the GTX 1060, the minimum is much the same regardless of the memory speed, though we do see a slight bump in the average frame rate. Still, the variance between 2133 and 3200 memory is just 
with the 1060, opposed to 17% with the 1070. Mafia 3 is another good example of a game that's not just heavy on the GPU, but also the CPU. Previously when testing with the GTX 1080 Ti, we saw massive performance gains from using the higher clocked memory. The boost from 2133 to 3200 netted us almost 40% more frames, which is quite incredible. However, before you race out and spend big on high speed memory, stop and think what kind of graphics card you will be using. Here we see when using the GTX 1070, that previously seen gain of almost 40% evaporates to virtually nothing. The minimum frame rate was improved by almost 10% when going from 2133 to 3200, though there was virtually nothing to be gained when upgrading from 2666. Now, with an even slower graphics card when using the GTX 1060, we see that there are no gains to be had at all. The GTX 1060 and RX 480 are hardly what I would consider slow, and many gamers will be using less capable graphics cards. So for these users, memory frequency really isn't a big deal. But let's move on and check out a few more games before making our final conclusion. Deus Ex Mankind Divided isn't a heavy CPU user, but even so, we found when using the GTX 1080 Ti, memory speed matters. The difference between DDR4, 2133 and 3200 was noticeable, as we saw a 14% increase in the average frame rate, and the all-important minimum was also boosted by 13%. Now, with the GTX 1070, those glorious gains are gone. The average is within the margin of error, and the same is true for the 0.1% frame time when comparing DDR4, 2666, and 3200. Once we filter down to the GTX 1060, there's no real gains worth talking about, and everything is again within the margin of error. Battlefield 1 is another game that saw huge performance gains when using the higher clocked memory with the GTX 1080 Ti. However, once we drop down to the GTX 1070, those gains are nowhere to be seen, as the Ryzen CPU was able to extract the maximum performance out of this graphics card using DDR4 2133. That being the case, we obviously found the same thing with the GTX 1060. Wrapping up the testing, we have Ashes of the Singularity Escalation, which has been tested using the high quality preset. As you can see, we are heavily CPU bound in this test when using the GTX 1080 Ti. As a result, the GTX 1070 provided the exact same performance when using DDR4 2133 and 2666 memory. It wasn't until we moved to 3200 memory that the 1080 Ti configuration started to pull away. Because this is such an extreme example of a CPU bound game, memory frequency makes a huge difference even when using the GTX 1070. That said though, dropping down to the GTX 1060, we did see little to no difference between the various memory frequencies. For the average frame rate, we see that DDR4 2666 was 4% faster than 2133, though moving from 2666 to 3200 netted us just two extra frames. So, even with an extreme example such as Ashes of the Singularity, memory speed makes little difference for those using a mid-range graphics card. So as you've just seen, depending on the graphics card used and the games you intend on playing, investing in premium high frequency memory might not be the best use of your hard earned cash. Let's take a look at the average figures across five of the six games tested. I am excluding Ashes of the Singularity here as that was measured a bit differently. This reflects pretty well what we just saw. Using the GTX 1080 Ti, Ryzen allowed for around 17% more performance. Meanwhile, that margin was reduced to almost nothing with the GTX 1070, as we see a negligible 5% performance boost. Then, with the GTX 1060, we're working well within the margin of error. At most, a 3% gain can be seen when boosting the memory frequency by 50%. Right, so those rocking a mid-range graphics card don't really need to worry about memory frequency. You're better off saving your money and expanding the memory capacity or perhaps even upgrading another component. As it stands, DDR4 2133 and 2400 memory are fairly evenly priced. In fact, in a number of cases, the slower memory actually costs a little more. Looking at G-Skills Flare X range, the 16 gigabyte dual channel 2400 kits currently cost around $115. The same price as the 2133 stuff, while the 3200 version we use is priced at $175 US. Of course, it's possible to overclock DDR4 memory, so stuff that's rated at 2400 can often be pushed to 2666 or 2933 or even higher by adjusting the memory timings and voltages. That said, as always, with overclocking, your mileage will vary depending on the type of memory you have, your motherboard, and even the quality of your CPU. Right now, based on pricing, and of course the performance just seen in this video, DDR4 2400 to 2666 looks to be the sweet spot, and this is certainly the memory frequencies I would recommend for anyone running a GTX 1070 or slower. Likewise, these memory recommendations also apply for anyone using a Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 5 processor, as well as anything on the Intel side, such as the Core i3, Core i5, or even Core i7.
Well, I hope that clears up the memory confusion for consumers. And as always, if you have any other questions, feel free to drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. I'm your host, Steve. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon.